All right, click the links uh, to uh, join the uh, Odyssey Bitch You Telegram or various ways to support the channel or become a member of this channel. It's got there's membership features. I'm not exactly sure how all that works, though. Um, I'm going to talk about Resident Evil because uh, I thought that the movies one and two were excellent. Part one was legitimately scary. I mean, for what it is, and part two was kind of more of an action adventure. But you know, they worked. They both worked very well. And then I think that they just when you have a cash cow like that, where you you know. It's for a set amount of budget. You can just keep making movies and they'll get like direct to DVD sales. You just kind of keep doing it. So as you well may have known, uh, have you been focusing on everything is woke and getting woker. And even in the face of uh, where the return on investment is not quite what it should be. And you go, oh, well, they're going to learn their lesson. These, I'll use Disney as a stand-in for all general entertainment companies. Like, oh, they they lost money on this movie. I'm sure they're going to start turning around any day now. No, because as I've said before, and eventually I know people are going to wake up to this, it's not financial. They're, this, is a, this is a religion to them on the order of any other religion. You go, that doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. Here's how. The top 1% who are pulling the strings on these on these big corp, big entertainment corp, are so wealthy, independently wealthy themselves, and if, if the whatever entertainment company they're into goes sideways, they can just go somewhere else. They don't care about the other people working for that corporation. And to be fair, you know, they'd probably go somewhere else. Uh, also to another corporation. So these people are like, they parasites, they go to, they go to a host to host and they just, they, they might destroy something. Or, I mean, now we're in the midst of this, you know, current Bolshevik, uh, cultural Bolshevik revolution where you're going to see stuff, uh, probably start to fall to pieces. And then maybe at the very end, like Netflix is starting to say, uh, they issued a, a warning to, uh, employees, a white email saying something like, yeah, listen, you're not going to agree with every decision we make at Netflix. And, you know, if you really are triggered by some of these these things, then Netflix is not the place for you. Which is an interesting thing to say until, I mean, you think, oh, that sounds awfully based. It sounds like they're turning it around. Um, it could be interpreted that way, but the way... And yeah, to be fair, that might be some of it. Like they're looking at the bottom line to go, okay, we don't want to actually go out of business being woke. We want to be woke, but we still want to turn a profit, which is... Um, even if you're woke, that should be something you're focusing on. But you got to keep in mind that they're the people who made cuties, I think. So that kind of that warning, like if you don't, li they didn't say uh, they didn't say woke or not woke. They said if you didn't like the content we're producing and it was going to emotionally disturb you, this is not the company for you. It's like, well, that also applied to cuties because they made cuties, which is uh, uh, just horrific, just absolutely horrific. And I don't really want to, you know, fed post or anything, but. Um, so, I mean, that warning could, like, what, what are they speaking to the left or the right? And to, I think kind of more likely they're speaking to the, um, to the left because people on the right, well, one, I don't think there's a whole ton of people who are like super right wing working at Netflix, at least not in the entertainment, the creative, or even not in a lot of positions. And if you're like, if you're behind the scenes doing like fiscal stuff or, or if you're in legal, it's like, you probably just don't care what, what Netflix makes. I mean, you're not, you, you're not watching Netflix, you're not supporting, dear God, don't support Netflix in any way. So that was an inter interesting thing for them to say. But it seems like a lot of other companies, the big entertainment corp will go right to the verge of going out of business before they start to turn things around. And uh, there's no, I don't, I don't think Netflix is going to turn anything around. Though they they had some, they're in some financial um, issues now. So is Disney. Now both those companies are probably sitting on a ton of cash because they've got old properties that are bringing in money, so they can continue to make woke woke propaganda that doesn't sell for a very very long time, or at least I'll say underperforms for a long time before they have to turn it around. People look at Disney and the parks and the movies that aren't doing as well, and they go, yeah, yeah, but they. They've got like something like two hundred billion in cash, or some some ridiculous amount of cash, and you go, oh, it's probably the old properties that are still bringing in money back when, back when Disney was enjoyable, and uh, so they're 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 okay with going down this path. It really is a religion to them. So anyway, so you see all this kind of stuff about um, stuff that nobody really cares about. There's uh, the twelve Twitter weirdos, uh, the SCWs, the college girls, or SCWs, or the, the the people who kind of make Twitter their life, and they, they, you know, this is 
like raging on Twitter, being a woke SAW on Twitter, building a platform. That's kind of their thing. And, you know, after they get, you get a little bit old, like once you hit 30, all this stuff, just the volume on all this stuff starts to turn down. And, and then as you get older, it's like, you just don't, you, you kind of start shifting in, in the other way. It's like, that's why older people are uh, usually shift into conservatism. Anyway, so you see all this stuff that most people don't care about. They claim to care about, you know, um, diversity representations in video games. Or there's uh, witchcraft. I think that's just more like a case of pay me attention. Uh, I was paying it. I didn't watch that off. Stuff like this. Um, BLT stuff. I mean, this is a it's a one-off, uh, the Pride magazine or comic book. So it's not such a big deal. But you look at it, you're, there's no demand for this. <laughs> Not, not even for collectors. It's it's a one issue thing in the Pride Collection. There's no demand for the Pride Collection at all. I mean, they're not going to lose money with it because it's you know what does it take to to write one comic book? It's like you can probably have a team work on that for you know under a hundred thousand dollars. I'd assume it's not a whole lot. I mean, especially if you're hiring people like kind of lesser known artists and writers. Probably would not take a whole lot to write an LGBT comic and draw and put it out there. So it's like they're probably it's probably gonna probably gonna be a push in terms of finances, but there's no demand for it. The demand would be for comics that you're familiar with back in the day kind of stuff. So you go, what's well, it's kind of weird how everything is wokey woke. And then I wanted to talk about Resident Evil, which um I was kind of more t- oh yeah um Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel or something. Yeah, nobody wants nobody wants that. Nobody wants a lot of this stuff. Witchcraft. Let me get to on this camera is such a piece of garbage uh, something like this uh, there's there's no demand for this either at uh, not even here's the thing if you're in the the blt let me speak for all blt people everywhere most of the time they just if you're into comics you just want to read like spider-man and uh batman straight straight ahead normal stories there's a percentage of people goes oh I, you know if i if i'm gay i want to see a gay character in there that's actually not as great a percentage as one would think there's a like there's very vocal people on social media who will say that kind of stuff like oh I want to see represent oh, here's here, a resonating flu I want to see representation it just doesn't it just doesn't pan out that way because uh, like Joe Glass does that those kind of comics and I think Max Visage might also and they're just they're not very good comics because it's just it's the whole focus on, is on your identity it'd be like the same if it was if it was some um some ethnic group and it was like you're I mean it's propaganda right at some point it becomes some propaganda where if you're you know, like I don't know Ta-Nehisi Coast type of stuff where it's you're just hitting us over the head with oh you hate this one group of people and non-stop 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 it's just endless propaganda it's like well adults and children don't want to see that in comics or movies in any capacity whatsoever so like even Joe Glasses he did he had a thing about I think it was actually called The Pride it was I read it um, online <laughs> It it was just like musical theater gay, hairdresser gay, where the the dudes are in short shorts and they're all they're all buff, and then there's you know like a bearded lady and okay maybe people are gonna buy the comic to support Joe Glass, which he seems like a nice enough guy actually, uh, you know I feel for the dude, but I think like okay say that comic you wrote the comic and made forty thousand dollars I have no idea. If you just wrote a normal, no offense, I mean normal in that it sells to the bigger audience. If you, if if you know straight people are like ninety five percent. If you just wrote a, a team up like an X Men Avengers type of team up, a group of people ensemble, it, would, it probably would have sold more. I mean, maybe you want to have an ancillary character who's BLT, but you make that the whole point of the story. It's it it doesn't fit into most or most comic books. The sex lives of the people are not are not hugely focused. I'm trying to think back to Spider-Man, we had the, the two famous romances. I guess I was, but it's like, that appeals to... N- Here's the thing, if, if the straight, if the straight, super straight, are 95% of the audience, it appeals to like, almost 100% of the audience, because I mean, gay, uh, BLT people will buy straight romance stories, and maybe they'll just imagine, you know, same sex or something in there. But uh, straight people are not going to buy BLT stuff. I don't know why that is. We read it, we look at it, and you're like, uh, it just doesn't click. Um, I, I don't know the reason. Maybe it could, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's like, but you're you're really limiting your audience when you do this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, so you're probably wondering, like, this is longer than I thought. Um, why is there so much woke, woke, woke? 
One, the companies, the people who work there are organically woke. They really, this is a religion to them. What is it, Nietzsche? You, get, you kill religion and you just replace religion. That's, um, I think he said God, but good luck with that one, buddy. You destroy, you destroy religion and nature pours a vacuum. And there's something in the human psyche where we have to have a belief system. So people relate, replace it instantly with, with Bolshevism, which, I mean, the history of Bolshevism is, is uh, very interesting. It's probably one you should uh, study up on. So in brief, uh, I should probably should open with this. The reason, one of the reasons stuff is woke is, yeah, they are organically woke. These people are insane. Um, two, you got a guy who uh, manages money, Fink, uh, Larry Fink, and... Um, BlackRock. BlackRock and Vanguard are two huge money managing type of things. So they manage money and they have to put it somewhere. So uh, Fink is is a, a globalist. He's very, very woke. And he has to put that money, move the money around somewhere. And you go, well, shouldn't you re- put it in the highest return on investments for your shareholders? Yeah, obviously, that would be that would be duty number one. You don't, don't breach that duty of uh, fiduciary duty of due care. Um, but it's a religion to these people. We're pushing these ideals. In short, he, what he's doing is he's investing in a, he's investing in woke, woke projects where they have things like, oh, you got to have diversity quotients, uh, quotients. You got to have, you know, that kind of thing. You go, well, that's not really the core of the story. The story is, it's a video game. We, we want to sell the biggest audience. The biggest audience is going to be white and Asian kids boys so the characters should look like them and they like they like hot chicks with you know hot blondes blue eyed with big jugs wearing you know the most ridiculous armor armor because it's a video game it's you know it's a it's a comic book it's it's a movie it's the, the only suspension of disbelief it's all fun so he makes some of his um funding into these companies contingent on being woke so you get a lot of stuff that doesn't it doesn't make sense it's like that borders on uh, manipulating the market. I don't know if it's insider trading, but it, it might be a duty of his fiduciary, a uh, duty of due care to the, the shareholders because he's not returning. He's not He's not uh, going after the highest return on investment, but these people don't care. And, and to be fair, there's probably not a whole lot of people who are going to hold him accountable because you need you need to, to go after something like that. Well, you, you need the district attorney or the, the Security and Exchange Commission to go after him, something like that. There's just probably bigger fish on their um, on bigger fish to fry, and then you look at you know who's in office. If it's if it's Biden, well he's you know very 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 left, and then you look at the deep state in general. The deep state over time evolves to be left, very left wing because they hire themselves first and they fire themselves last. So over time, you look at this these people who are pulling the strings have been been behind the strings for decades. They're all. They're going to be overrepresentation of left wing people, so there's less. That's why you see a lot of funny things where the DAs do things that don't make sense. Um, I mean, you see a lot of things. America is headed for some interesting times. Anyway, you can look up uh, Larry Fink to see what he looks like. Um, I'll use him as a thumbnail. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next episode.